Hello everybody, Happy New Year, and I hope you all are doing great. Back here with another awesome animation tutorial, where we will learn about basic creature animation. This is what we'll try to achieve, simple jump off a very heavy creature. The points that are to keep in mind regarding this tutorial is that it's not a beginner tutorial, but for someone who knows the application and about the principles of animation. This is just a demonstration video of how creatures are animated in feature films, TVs, or movies. So hope you have fun watching this and learning the process. Alright, let's begin. I have a setup of a very simple scene here with a tree and a rig named Tiny, which can be downloaded from for free at creativecrash.com. This rig is very good for creature animation, most of which resembles a gorilla or a chimpanzee-like animal. Let's test the rig a little bit to see if everything is working. I prefer keeping the controls in IK for this type of animation because I will have the character contact the tree, the ground, etc. And keeping it FK will be a problem since I'll have to counter animate almost every pose when the contacts are happening. Alright, let's talk a little about the idea and the reference which will help us in understanding the motion. I've got a video reference here from one of the documentaries about chimpanzees, African forest. This video will give us the idea where to start with a jump. I use references like this because they show exactly how this type of creatures move and I get a basic picture of the contact poses. These contact poses here in the video will help us determine if we are doing the movement right. For instance, we have this first pose here, and the anticipation, and the swinging pose, and so on. Without video references, playing the guessing game can be risky a lot of times. In case you don't have a reference for some crazy weird animation you, your director has told you to you know, do, you have to figure out it by drawing out whatever crazy animation you're told. Thumbnailing the contact poses help during those times. We have, uh, we have the reference here. All right, let's start. Let's start it by placing the character in the tree. It's a bit small a tree. Let's make it a little bigger. Okay, this looks fine. Let's place him in uh, this uh, on a branch here. Making uh, we have to make sure that all the poses are the contact poses are good because um, it is very important. Making sure the poses are strong is very important because that is the root of the final movement. What we will see after days of work. This tree has been taken from the visor panel in the general tab. Alright, let's check the video. We have to keep checking the video a number of times to understand the poses here. First pose will be his uh, cling to the tree. And then we'll go to the anticipation pose. Let's start with the pose where he is clinging to the tree.
So as I was saying, uh, strong poses are really, really important. If we are not solid with the foundation of the poses, after days of hard work, the animation will not look the way we thought it would. Putting the head down because it's aiming to jump downwards. And putting this hand to the tree. Uh, the fingers are not shown in the proxy. It's probably hidden in a layer. But at the high mesh model, the fingers are totally available. Yeah, look at that. All right, I'll, I'll fix the legs here in the high res because the high res and the low res uh, and models look completely different from what they are. That's why if I keep on posing the low res model, I wouldn't probably get the uh, as many strong poses as I would if I did it with this high risk model right now I won't be giving super detailed uh, on the fingers and all just make uh, make it look like it's holding the tree. Later on in the detailing process, I will go through all the poses one more time, just to make sure that every pose is strong and and it feels like it's every pose is saying something. All right, that looks fine. A bit of spread here. Okay, cool. Well, let's take thumb up a little bit. And from uh, we're looking at the perspective right now from inside the camera, it'll probably look you know, it won't probably matter where his thumb is or whatever. But from perspective, we can see everything, so we will try to can you know be precise about the poses so this is what is gonna be the path of motion and we're creating uh, a path of motion with the CV curve tool <coughs> just to get the uh, reference of uh, how the character is going to jump from the tree center pivot this alright I'm gonna bring this up here right near the chimpanzee just to get an idea of uh, how the chimpanzee is going to jump from up top alright let's modify this curve a little bit So, a little bent here. Let's make it straight. All right. 
That looks pretty decent. He's going to jump from this this hole. It's curvy. We're not going to use the curve as an as an animation tool, but we will be using that as a reference tool just to get the idea of the motion, the path of motion of the jump. Let's create a, you know, let's select the hole and create a select set for the animation. It's not getting selected somehow. I don't know why. So, okay, it's probably because of the IK switches. Yeah, now it's got now it got selected. Now I'm gonna deselect the global control because I want the global control to be on the tree. I don't want it animated or anything. And I'll make a select set table on the shelf. Quick select set. Um, gorilla. And the shelf. There you go. Alright. Let's start with the keyframe, the first keyframe here. Oh, uh, this is this is FK now. I have to change this. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's go and check the video here for the poses. That's the anticipation pose. This is the normal pose. The first and about a 26, the anticipation pose happens, and the swing pose, and so on. But first of all, we have to make this uh, this whole motion here from the first pose to the anticipation pose. Alright, I'm here in the first pose right now and I wouldn't care much about the timing while creating the first poses. I try to keep the poses probably at equal distances and probably at the same time. But once I'm done with the poses and before starting to break down and further in between, I'll definitely check the timing and try to match to something that feels natural. But right now I'll just, you know, uh, I'll just make the pose to somewhere that feels relevant. Okay, let's take care of the shoulders. We have to keep the hand attached to the tree until the moment he is swinging and he's about to jump. Till then, his both the hands will be attached to the tree, so we have to take care of the shoulder, you know, according to the movement. All right, this feels okay. I use this uh, three view uh, interface here in Maya. All right, let's check. Change this to a linear. Save it. Okay, this looks fine. Let's check out the third pose here. The swinging pose here. This is probably a very straight pose. Not 
from up top the branch while he's hanging down. While blocking out, I try to keep the pose transition to linear or step. Right now, I'm, I'm keeping them linear, and maybe later when I have to deal with timing and everything, I'll change them to stepped. Linear helps in understanding the vague motion while blocking out. But when I when I time the poses, linear kind of gives me floating results. So I change them to step and time it, and later later on change them back to linear to see if the timing matches. Let's bring down the body here. Make these guys straight. We have to make sure that the hands are still in the right place where they are they will probably slide a little back because he's about to jump down other than that my shoulders are going to change a lot they're going to be on top let's make the hand okay yeah, we will we will uh, take care of the fingers later on. Right now we're working on the proxy mode, so there are no fingers. The pivot control of this uh, the hand of this creature is uh, it's not available. It's, it's actually it's not an extra control. It's just inside an it's an attribute inside the hand control. So sometimes it gets a little you know difficult to control the hand the pivots. Let's key that. See how it is looking. See, I'm just not timing. I'm just, you know, putting them in different places. But what we want is we don't want the character to come straight down. We want the character to go, you know, like this. This is the, the anticipation pose, and then we want him to go down, and then he's going to come swinging right to the floor, to the ground. Right now he's coming straight down. We'll create a cre key later on. <clears throat> he's going to go up like that. I will clear this pose. A little later, right now I'll just uh, I'll just make the other third pose here. Creating single poses can take up to an hour or you know half an hour hours even more because the more detailing you give to your poses the better your animation will look like later on but since it's a demonstration video I'm not going into so much detail about all the poses and stuff I have to finish try to finish this tutorial so we will get a result uh, in the end, probably by an hour or so. We have to keep checking the high res. 
high match mode every now and then to make sure that whatever poses I'm putting in the proxy is making sense. Sometimes the intersection of the proxy makes it difficult to understand how clear or unclear the pose is. So working with the high res every once in a while helps. I won't be giving so much detail in the fingers right now as I said before, but uh, I will just uh, keep them, you know, make it look like it's uh, natural. And even this hand, the fingers of this hand are attached to the tree. The rest of the hand is probably slipping down. We're going to be creating a camera later on in which we won't be seeing this hand so much, but we have to make sure that everything is fine you know because sometimes while rendering or lighting you know because of the wrong poses or not accurate poses we kind of see shadows and stuff so we have to make sure that every pose is accurate from every angle well let's try to push the poses a little bit Alright, this bow is probably going to come down a little bit. With the hand, it could come down. Make it straight and make the body go up. Yes, this makes more sense. Okay, let's make the legs a little straight. All right, that looks fine. Let's see the other pose. This is these are all breakdown poses, uh, but we have to. I will use this uh, pose here just to kind of get the curve of his uh, projectile or his, you know, his jump. I'm going to keep it here somewhere around here just to get the idea of the whole jump curve. Maybe the curve itself is too big for the whole jump thing. But we will deal with that later. Right now we will deal with the pose. We can put as much time as we want in each of the poses, days. All right. Let's make this curve 
Procreator, okay. All right. After working for 15 to 20 minutes, I created a few poses until he falls to the ground. All those poses here. Two poses added in ground pose and the pose before that. And creating a pose. And it takes a lot of time. Make this curve a little smaller because that's how he is gonna fall. Okay, this looks uh, this looks okay right now. All right, let's change this to step mode here. You can change it from here or here. Step mode. All right. Now we can do, you know, change the timing and all. This ham somehow didn't get selected at the quick select set. So we don't have the timing right now. These are just uniform keys without any acceleration or speed or anything like that so we will have to see everything now his falling will be you know a little faster and then there will be a hang time and when he falls to the ground it's gonna be like super speed there's this hang time here and then it's like basically like a bouncing ball While creating timing, I'll have to figure out the breakdown of the poses so as to get more detailed timing for the hang time or any movement as such. Well, creating breakdown easy is the best possible way is to change the pose transition from step to linear so that we can pick one key from the movement Maya created as default and further work on it by changing it a step. So we now have a little bit of hang time here so that we can you know change the time and kind of see if it feels natural where well, it's very slow right now we have to remember that it's a very heavy creature so you know whatever we do we have to uh, keep in mind that he's his hang time will be a little more than normal normal thing, and he and the, and the fall would be at a greater speed, and there will be a very less bounce. And even though there will be bounces, the bounces will also you know, take more time since it's more heavy.